Recently, I played through Battlefield 3 again with the help of some friends to keep me sane. The following is a completely accurate recounting of the campaign, trust me. We start the game by jumping on a train and stealing a gun from a passenger that we flatten, and then shoot the rest of the people on the train as we make our way to the front. The terrified passengers try desperately to stop our crazed murder spree, but we're wearing plot armor and can't be killed by bullets. After finally figuring that out, a passenger knocks us out and holds us down because even though we can take a magnum shot to the chest, we can't resist an old man holding us to the floor with one arm. That's the end of the game. But then there's more. The game cuts to an interrogation room where it's revealed that we were actually Willem Dafoe the whole time, and Alec Baldwin and Vincent D'Onofrio are really pissed at us, presumably for our work in Beyond Two Souls. Also, whoever the cameraman is really needs to wipe their fucking lens off. Then the game fades to black and plays the ear rape rendition of God's Gonna Cut You Down before it's revealed that we've been shoved into an uncomfortably tiny metal box with five other guys until we're thrown outside into a solar flare. After ignoring whatever it was we were supposed to be doing, brought to us by the Allstate guy, we run into Blackburn's worst nightmare, a door. Luckily, the rest of the squad understands how doors work and are able to open it for us. Then I found out that Battlefield 3 doesn't have a toggle sprint, so I'm giving it a 0 out of 10. We're escorted through a second door, and the squad splits up, but luckily we're still paired with Matkovic, who knows how to open doors. Chaffin gets shot by a sniper, but our time in Beyond Two Souls trained us in the art of David Cage quick time events, and we save him with the power of pressing spacebar a few times. Spacebar. Exciting. Spacebar. <laughs> Exciting. Spacebar. Is... What do you want to do for this part where he has to drag his friend? We'll make him press spacebar every three seconds. We then proceed to murder a bunch of people in a parking lot that are presumably just trying to find out where they parked their car. The squad opens a door for us and we blow them up, but it's okay, they'll recover. We run up a flight of stairs to another door, but the fully recovered squad is able to get through it no problem. We run through a small office and murder the workers that were just coming back from break. We run up another flight of stairs, because stamina is for pussies, and the squad opens another door for us. The squad wants to play a game of human centipede, and we win, so Matkovic hands over his rocket launcher as our prize. As it turns out, we are right next to a hotel that charged us for room service even though we didn't order any, so we decide to see who would win, a large concrete building or an explodey boy. The hotel lost. You're telling me one RPG shot can demolish a building like that? Yes. Chaffin doesn't like talking to people on his walk, so we murder everyone that might have asked him about the weather. Then a parade starts, I think, so we murder a few of those people and mirrors edge our way off the building. We hump an ammo crate to bring it to Climax so it gives us its sweet ammo juices, and murder a couple of rug salesmen because we don't need any goddamn rugs! After coming out of Iran's rug emporium, the squad wants us to hook up their computer to the Ethernet port, so we have to follow an Ethernet cord to see where it's plugged in. Turns out the guy who plugged the cable in didn't want to share his internet connection, so we murder him and unplug it so nobody gets the internet. The parade catches up with us and we can't stand the noise, so we start murdering everyone involved before an earthquake ruins our fun. Also, rest in peace helicopter guy who got crushed by a building. Alec Baldwin threatens to put us in timeout for being a bad boy, but we're too busy eating a granola bar to care. This just makes it so much worse, like trying to watch this scene. <laughs> you just hear the, the crunching in the background. I like to imagine it's our character eating. <laughs> like he was just watching this. The, they're, like, they're like, focus on the questions! Nah. Put away the granola bar! We wake up on the street outside because we couldn't get another hotel room for the night after we blew the last one up, so we play hide and seek with the worst seekers ever. A rat finally finds us and gives us the Black Plague, but the other Seekers are a bad sport and shoot us, so we give the rat the finger. Wait, did it bite <laughs> you? Yeah. What? And then look, I give it the finger. <laughs> we run into some more rug salesmen, and we give one of them a special hug before we pull a machine gun out of our anal cavity that we had stored for a rainy day, and murder the rest of the rug salesmen because they didn't want our special hugs. After running through the city for a little while looking for our squad, we come across a door and are afraid that our adventure has come to an end, until some helpful people open up a garage door for us and we murder them. Our plot armor saves oh. us from a direct shot from an RPG, okay. but we're not sure who shot it at us, so we just kill everybody in the general vicinity. We come across another door, but this one is already slightly open, so all we have to do is open it up just a little bit more and we get through. We're back at the chalkboard and find out that we missed lunch again. We're so upset that we break a door down because we still haven't figured out how doors work. We meet back up with Montez, who mistakes us for someone named Motherfucker Hands, I mean, hands. because his severe social anxiety prevented him from looking directly at us. We chalk it up to brain damage and attribute... Uh, uh, that. We talk... 
I, this is a hard sentence. <laughs> we chalk it up to brain damage and attribute our own lack of understanding to how doors work to that as well. After all, we got hit in the head a few times already. Montez helps us open a garage door because even though it doesn't open like a conventional door, it still has door in the name so we don't understand how it works. There's some kind of nighttime parade going on, but we don't like parades, so we murder everyone to put a stop to it. Our Uber finally arrives that we ordered like 40 minutes ago, and we witness some honestly terrible architectural design as we fly off. After asking Alec Baldwin to stop talking because of our severe brain damage... Stop me if this is incorrect. Stop. Yeah, stop. <laughs> no, Who the fuck is Farouk? My, my head hurts so much, I have so much brain damage. I'm pretty sure it's leaking out my ears right now. The game puts us in the role of Lieutenant Hawkins, an SJW fighter pilot who believes in equal treatment, so she harasses her co-pilot. We go through a brief pre-flight check where we find out that Hawkins has a swivel head. The sun was the real terrorist. Whoa, oh. whoa, whoa. <laughs> also, Hawkins breaks her neck. Star Fox. Whoa, did you see that? My head just like completely did a swivel, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we go through the world's most boring mission where we do nothing aside from death stare a few enemy jets. Sky informs us on the history of France during a load screen. Who would win? An entire, the entire country of France or one choppy boy. And we're greeted to another cutscene where we find out that Alec Baldwin is actually a psychic, but he won't teach us his powers or how to open doors. I know how your fucking story is! We're not here to man Does he? And why are you asking him? Mission? I want to know how my story ends. Can you tell me? Are, are you are you psychic? Goes, our are I, I don't know. I, I don't know if psychics are a real thing. I have so much brain damage. <laughs> can you even? Can you tell me? Can you teach me how to open a door? <laughs> Actually, I got. Can you open doors with your mind? I've gotten. <laughs> my hands can't open doors. Can you teach me how to do it with my brain? I know how your story ends. You develop telekinesis. Yes. <laughs> become the main character of the Elder Scrolls Six. Door. I know how your story ends. You get CT, and 17 years later, you <laughs> kill yourself in your mansion. Nah, my gun's behind a. My gun's locked in a gun real. cabinet, and I can't figure out how to open the door. So that I was some OJ. Head against the cabinet. The game cuts to a squad outside of Hugh Hefner's mansion, probably right before we're about to raid the place for his porno mags and actresses. We're given a mortar and told to run down a hill, where we set up dangerously close to the underside of a bridge, so we can fire lens flares at the enemy and confuse them with the concept of light. We murder our way through a bunch of people just having a picnic, and the game thinks that we didn't do one of our objectives, but we did do it! We did do it! The game has caught up. Finally, we're given the task of really opening our first door, but some asshole opened it for us on the other side, so we murder him and all his friends because now we're fucking pissed! We meet up with Montez's gay black lover. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! The second is hell, it says Montez, but that's not Montez. If you read through the lore, he and Montez are, are in yeah, see, that's a secretive Montez. gay relationship. After murdering a bunch of people causing a traffic jam, we talk about the disappointing U.S. school system because I thought that Tehran was a country, but it's actually the capital of Iran. But Tehran's not a state, Tehran's a country. No, Tehran no is Tehran's a city, dude. Oh, wait, we covered this. Tehran. That's why I said Washington, D.C. Tehran is the capital of Iran. I thought oh. you remember it. I thought I was had Toronto as its own country. I'll go into the history. The, the U.S. education system, but I didn't know that Toronto was not a country. We're ambushed by a tank, but it's easily defeated by standing on top of it. This is the only instance of sequence breaking that we were able to pull off. Game breaking! Game breaking! The tank takes a shot at us, but our plot armor protects us, except for our head, so we take even more brain damage. The squad opens another door for us because we still can't be trusted with doors. We make our way to the bank to pull off a Battlefield Bad Company and steal all their gold. We perform a physically impossible feat of parkour through a small window with like a hundred pounds of gear on and get kinky with Matkovic and a bank employee in the bathroom. We kill an employee with psychic powers, which we probably picked up from Alec Baldwin, and made it through the rest of the bank with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Blackburn Defoe gets to show off his quick time event skills once again by jumping down an elevator shaft. We made it to the world's biggest door, but Blackburn is especially not allowed to open that door, so the squad does it for us. After finding out that someone stole most of our sandwich, we decide to leave all the money behind and go after the motherfuckers that stole our sandwich because we haven't eaten in days because we missed lunch twice. During the transition to the mission Comrades, we guess that it stars a Russian named Dmitry or Vladimir. Oh, this is where we're playing as the Russians now.
If, and they also blow up the What is it, tower. Dimitri? What's the guy's name? Every game where you play, if someone relatively Russian, your name is Dimitri. <laughs> or, or... Happened Vladimir. in World at War Two. Vladimir. Vladimir. <laughs> After Alec Baldwin admits to us that he thinks Elvis is still alive, I believe Elvis is still alive. I'm not buying any tickets for fucking show. He believes Elvis is still alive. Vincent D'Onofrio confirms our guess that Comrades is about a Russian guy named Dmitri, and he even has a friend named Vladimir because, of course, his name's Dmitri. Oh my God, his name is Dmitri. <laughs> You gotta be <laughs> shitting me. Dimitri isn't allowed to drive because he's actually Blackburn's cousin and has just as much brain damage. Sky mistakes the mission for a scene in G.I. Joe where the Eiffel Tower gets destroyed. Remember in the, the G.I. Joe movie when they have that, like, disintegrator weapon that they use on the Eiffel Tower? That's what I'm thinking of. We run over Thatcher and invade a small parking garage where we murder all the people just trying to get to their cars. Dimitri is tasked with opening a door, but he doesn't actually know how to do it either and tries to open it with his foot. We are so embarrassed that we murder all the witnesses and take a big whiff of their toxic gas before putting on a gas mask. We run into an office and decide that all the workers should take some time off, so we murder them. Vladimir gets killed by one of the assholes that stole Blackburn's lunch, but we catch him and find out that he didn't actually have the lunch, and then the entirety of Paris gets lit as fuck. Then we're introduced to Miller, who is actually two 12-year-old boys stacked on top of each other who are super obsessed with dinosaurs. They operate a tank. After a painfully long sequence of driving the tank, broken up by a short sequence of not driving the tank, we drive the tank to the bank and watch Blackburn and his squad get airlifted out while we're left to die in a sandstorm. Lucky for us, though, one of the locals is there to save the day and gets us out of the storm. Turns out the local is actually a televangelist or something and we're forced to sit and listen to a sermon before they slit our throat on live TV. But it's okay, they only slit the top kid's throat, the bottom one will escape. Then we play through an orange and green point and click adventure, and it fucking sucks. Suddenly, we're in a forest, and we murder all the locals before we make our way across a field and murder all the farmers. Sponsored by Google. Is there anyone even driving that truck right now? Yeah, I bet you there's not. I bet you there's not. Oh, what? No, there's not. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> it's yeah, an auto. Didn't you know in Don't 2013 we were, we, were getting, we were testing out automated cars in full warfare? Thanks, Google. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. Like Battlefield 3, <laughs> sponsored by Google. Blackburn gets run over by an LAV crossing the street because he didn't look both ways. Oh, that's funny. God damn it, Will. They're, they're in big cars. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> we play tag with a jet, but the jet isn't a good sport and fucks off when we tag them. Sky tells me to jump off a bridge, but it kills us. So we play tag with a jet again. Also, they killed Campo and Makovic. Oh, no. Cut back to Dimitri, and suddenly Vladimir is back to life, so it's probably happening before the asshole that stole Blackburn's lunch and made Paris get turned. We steal some tourists' Range Rover and drive to their party villa, where we murder all their friends with absolutely no problems whatsoever. <laughs> Someone tries to escape our murder spree, but we don't appreciate that, so we tell them to stop and they let us go swimming in their pool. Whoa. That's weird. Then we cut back to Blackburn and realize that Inferno, who had been watching up to that point, had fallen asleep. Did you Inferno? Did Inferno fall asleep? <laughs> Inferno. Inferno! Blackburn runs through the trashed house party and meets up with his cousin to go bowling, but Dimitri doesn't want to go bowling because he already had a swim. Dimitri tells Blackburn that he can get one of his stolen sandwiches back if he kills the Allstate guy, so we decide that our sandwich is worth more than the life of some black dude and we murder him to go get our sandwich. Okay. Oh, what would you do for a country? Kill a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Now that's Definitely demonetized. <laughs> if it wasn't before, it is now. <laughs> then Vincent D'Onofrio tells us that we're not allowed to go get our sandwich, so they bring in Montez and we beat the fuck out of Vincent and Alec Baldwin and run off to the train, just like the beginning of the game. Now we know that the reason we want to go to the front of the train is because the old man has our sandwich. We don't get our sandwich back from the old man and the train derails, but we chase him down on a car and crash, but nobody was wearing a seatbelt and the old man shoots Montez for being so careless. 
Then we beat the old man's head in with a brick with the power of David Cage quick time events and get our sandwich back. Game over. Fair enough. <laughs> Good night, Inferno. <laughs> Sleep well. <laughs>